Okay, welcome everybody and thank you again um, to the organizers for having us. Um, we are very glad that we had the opportunity to um, have um, an, our conversation, uh, a next step here um, together with you. Um, I would like to maybe say a bit about um, the format. So I know there are many art historians here. They have maybe a good idea what the art to talk might be. So in our sense, it will be rather a conversation and um, we, that is also part of our collaboration because um, the fellowship project will actually deal also here with um, um, the personal photography collection of Parastu Fahura, where we are interested in to work on <clears throat> historical press and political photography um, of the times when uh, your parents have been active um, in, in Iran after the Shah regime was um, um, brought down. Um, <clears throat> but um, today we are also feeling quite inspired to think further also about and talk about your art, mm -hmm. uh, namely with the concepts that here are now um, at stake to talk about um, the questions of um, interruptions, detours, and absences, and we took the liberty to take all them together. It's uh, <laughs> much easier, and also, as you will see, the, the artworks that we have been selecting together um, are really not um, one speaks for one concept, um, even um, it's rather um, entangled situation, as you also will see here. Um, but first of all, I would like to hand over again to to you, Parastu, because obviously there are some also important yes. things to mention. So, hello, everybody. It's nice to be here. Thank you for inviting us. Um, uh, actually, as we talked uh, for a couple of days, we thought that we have to start with a solidarity note to the uh, uprising of uh, Iranian people, especially Iranian young women. Uh, and just uh, remember the, the uh, very main uh, central uh, slogans of this uprising, which we have here in different languages. The first one is in Kurdish, then in Parsi, and then you see the other languages. So that was just, uh, we wanted to emphasize on, on that uh, and have it here. I think um, in, we don't talk much more about um, the uprisings um, today, but um, as um, you maybe also can imagine, here we have a lot of aspects of globalization, connectivity, disconnectivity, and um, so that is some things where also, for example, my own work as an anthropologist is um, really much um, focused on. And um, I think I stopped for a second. <laughs> Yes, sorry. <laughs> um, but um, there is also, of course, another um, point why we wanted to um, uh, make the statement here because obviously, Paris Tours, your work um, is very much part of, and you as a person as well, you are very much part of, um, of these um, kind of uprisings. You are even living in exile here in Germany not being able to work in Iran or to live there, you are still very present in Iran um, as well. And um, <laughs> there are a lot of um, initiatives and activism that you are doing all over the world, not only in Iran or in uh, Germany, for example, but um, using, for example, also social media, particularly as a, as a very important tool. So, um, Having this kind of bridge um, from the current situation in Iran, um, we would like to come now to um, our sort of, um, let's say, conceptual mm -hmm. framework that we have thought of, um, which makes um, it very interesting to look again uh, at some of your works that um, we want to present you. With, and there are actually three of them together. Um, <clears throat> there will be no academic conceptual um, sort of thesis now coming, but um, we wanted to emphasize that um, we think that um, these three concepts are really well chosen, interruption, intro, and absences are really much entangled, but also sort of co-constitutive phenomena 
um, of uh, globalization processes and connectedness. And these kind of entanglements and disconnectedness is something that um, not only people living in exile are themselves um, obviously um, sort of experiencing, but also you in your own sort of um, work as an artist and an activism. So they are ambivalent and multi-layered meanings, and this is something that we would like to now um, sort of frame again and question with some, um, let's say, keywords which are not really um, have not you know, should not be seen isolated or standing against each other, but um, maybe are helpful or interesting foci to think about and talk about your your work. So. Um, just to say that, and we will again come back to these, um, and then I will hand over to you again. Um, <clears throat> so one point was, um, how do we now conceptualize or where do we see the connection between art and um, these key uh, terminologies here um, um, to discuss, so interruption, detours, and absences. And we thought that um, a lot of, and you came up with that idea actually, you mentioned, okay, this is so much in my practice and in the processuality and um, where I then also see with many of my works how I embody and have still in the same time um, this always this fear or this challenge to lose also my connection, for example, your connection to Iran. Then you were mentioning it already, um, uh, Honey, in, uh, in the beginning that um, Paras to work, uh, your work is my, very much also related to your own biographic uh, biography. Mm -hmm. So bringing this intimacy and publicity together is something that is also one of the strengths, obviously. Um, <clears throat> and um, these connectivities, which are always challenged by holding and keeping them, but also letting them go at the same time, is something where we also see interesting aspects of the this in the connectivity. So um, this is sort of, um, let's say, the, the framework where we started to think about how to maybe organize this talk and what kind of work um, we want to talk about. And now we are already starting with the first one. And I would say maybe you want to um, give maybe. some information about this work. <clears throat> Um, the work, this work, Watermark, I did it um, as I was invited to Brodsky Center that in Rutgers University, uh, where I had the chance to work with a in a paper making uh, um, studio uh, and printing studio. So. Um, the women artists are invited to stay there for a while and develop a work, an edition. And uh, in 2015, as I was invited, um, it was uh, this, uh, the crisis of refugees and um, the whole time uh, the, the, the news coming in that here and there that the, the, they are drowning. So um, going back to what you said about process of working as a part of thinking, uh, um, you know, the process of papier making paper is uh, um, the opposite of drawing. It uh, means that you, you save the papier fasa, the, the, the paper fibers. Fibers, yes. <laughs> so uh, you save it from 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 the water, and um, making paper as uh, or paper as kind of um, a material that uh, is like the memory of the world, uh, that everything is there mm -hmm. on paper. I thought I can connect it with this uh, uh, moment of uh, thinking of refugees, what is there, uh, what is happening to them. So that was the, um, the work mm -hmm. I um, mm -hmm. did for, or I thought maybe it is good connected to the, and these are all uh, sketches, um, um, trying to 
go step to step uh, uh, into this uh, process of paper making. And um, what we also thought is interesting here um, in this work were well, this ambivalences of water, for example, mm -hmm. right? So you have on the one hand water in the Mediterranean Sea, for example, where refugees are trying to um, save their lives, uh, but on the same uh, same time, um, for many of them, this is um, actually then becomes the end, um, the disastrous end of their already disastrous journey. Mm -hmm. And um, having on the one side the water as a really important um, element in this production process of paper making, yeah, mm -hmm. you have it on the other side here depicted as well as an element that is really yes. um, of danger and of loss. And um, this is something where we thought also that these three sort of sort of concepts, I just have to also look them up again, but um, uh, questions of interruptions, for example, how water interrupts certain kind of life stories, for example, cuts them down, but also um, brings together, right? And um, so that was something where we thought it's an interesting work um, that uh, we can also maybe think a bit further on. Uh, maybe there will be later on also possibilities to um, to explain it a bit more even on mm -hmm. this, um, on the paper process mm -hmm. and also how um, you felt so much in obviously also not only inspired but obviously also touched by all these media mm -hmm. that we are circulating mm -hmm. the news. Yeah. Here we have again a different layer and just to say it again multi, multiple mm -hmm. layers of meaning production that these concepts bring together but also your work where you felt the need obviously also to engage with this crisis um, of these people. Um, and that is something that we found also in other works of yours, right? Um, shall we <coughs> then maybe move on to the next one first and then to <coughs> give here another mid sort of work that you are also working on for some time now? Yeah. So um, actually the work that we want to emphasize on uh, are these butterflies that you can see. It's some kind of a archive of butterflies that I have been uh, drawing. These are digital drawings and um, each butterfly is connected to a political issue, place, uh, uh, memory uh, uh, from my, uh, from Iran, where I come from. Uh, that these are actually symbols of unwritten history of the dissidents, written, uh, the, 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 the memory that is not part of the official memory of the country because of the uh, um, because of the system that doesn't allow the uh, narratives of dissidents to be part of the uh, history. So, um, um, for example, maybe some of you have heard of this, uh, um, the very important uh, or very big, horrible uh, prison in uh, North Tehran, which was uh, on fire for a couple of uh, days, one of these uh, uh, butterflies is butterfly of Evin prison. So these are many, many different uh, uh, places that some kind of archiving them uh, in visuals, which has got this poetic moment of uh, not, uh, not looking at them as just uh, <laughs> history narrative of the history but but a moment of bringing together the poetic and history mm -hmm. um, but i also thought it's interesting this motif of the butterfly right mm -hmm. because this animal obviously it, it's it's, it's it symbolizes freedom somehow to move somewhere it wants uh, to but on the same side it carries a really really heavy package of uh, very um, disastrous situation and events um, in the um, um, in the situation of Iran um, where a lot of human rights violations are, are happening and um, uh, where really people, women, but also men are living uh, in um, very problematic um, situations, right? 
Mm -hmm. mm, so you were also explaining me when we were sort of um, having our brainstorming for this talk today that you had this idea of this collecting, the archiving mm -hmm. of this keeping. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a thing that is something that I found also particularly interesting. And you were saying already something, but maybe you have some more. Um, <laughs> yeah. So collecting um, memories, which yes. are. Um, I mean, also here we have the ambivalence, right? Yeah. Of course, if you are collecting butterflies, you are taking their, their flight yeah. away, right? They are not able to fly anymore. But on the same side, you are um, sort of preserving mm -hmm. these um, um, memories, um, which are actually not official um, and not allowed even maybe to, to, um, to talk more about um, in public in Iran, for example. Mm -hmm. So this was something where yeah. we also had this idea of the ambivalences um, and where yeah. mm. saying and not saying or uh, showing and hiding at the same time this kind of ambivalence which you can also see on the butterflies because and also this kind of ambiguity in the beauty of it and the brutality which has mm -hmm. uh, which each uh, uh, scene is uh, uh, representing mm -hmm. We cannot, um, we have not a detail now of this, um, but um, they are normally figures that yes. we are showing. Um, figures which are in um, in situations of being tortured, for example, right? So you have um, a motive which is um, a very much a violent, um, representing violence, representing on a very beautiful aesthetic wise, very interesting and uh, nice to look at. Um, sort of uh, butterflies right yeah and this is something that you are um, actually working this technique of the digital mm -hmm. prints is something that you are working quite often with. Mm -hmm. just maybe to mention it this idea of the um, wallpaper for example where yeah. you as well have mm -hmm. kind of figures right in um, yes <clears throat> yes uh, the, it is interesting for practicing uh, as a practice uh, uh, um, creating images which are not at the first sight mm -hmm. showing themselves or, or the whole story and uh, encourage the viewer to look to look uh, uh, precisely that is uh, what I think is interesting in art mm -hmm. actually or what I try to do just to show that maybe at the first case you didn't see uh, properly, mm -hmm. so emphasizing on the process of seeing, mm -hmm. looking mm -hmm. as the uh, heart of a visual art. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is very interesting because um, from far away, these um, butterflies you don't, um, you are not able to recognize the motives. Mm -hmm. right? You really yeah. have to come closer and to um, to see them with different um, patterns, um, and then you realize. Yeah. That, um what kind of um, cruelty is actually depicted here. How many butterflies are there? Uh, I think you know? because I think you know, yes, I that was yes. Uh, uh, I think uh, hundred uh, mm -hmm. more than hundred thirty. Mm -hmm. yes. So just to give the idea that um, all these different butterflies are really representing and are sort of relating to mm. a particular moment in um, Iranian history of oppression and um, human yeah. rights um, violation. So that is something where um, you have also an archive um, that is um, yeah. such um, really worth to also keep and to work on. And I think that is yeah. something that you mm -hmm. are also doing, right? Mm -hmm. that is, um, these motives are the, color, the number of um, um, yeah. Butterflies are growing, no? Yes, that's a, that's a working progress. So that is uh, that is this kind of going back to this. Uh, uh, that's that is archiving. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is maybe also interesting that um, this um, art, the art, is not only um, normally visi um, visible or exhibited in the exhibitions um, as such, right? Mm -hmm. But you are very much using also, for example, social media. So that is something yeah. that I'm particularly interested in: how social media are sort of facilitating 
having access to this kind of activist work if you want? Yes, of course. <clears throat> that is, uh, for example, very recently, the, uh, the, the butterfly of Evin uh, prison, I posted it at the time that uh, this horrible news came in uh, with some images of uh, this prison burning. So uh, that is, uh, for me, part of the, the, the reality, how I look at uh, certain uh, memories mm -hmm. or, uh, and, um, as you said, uh, political activism. Uh, and it is also used by the others. So mm -hmm. they also ask, can, can I post it? Or, or it is um, uh, actually like a pamphlet that mm -hmm. you give away. And so it's the, the others share it. And so you are, you become part of a community. Mm -hmm. This is not disconnected, but being for a moment connected. Mm -hmm through this kind of images. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also the um, very fasc fascinating to observe also how this, this and the connectivity, um, they are really, a, it's a permanent um, process. It's a dynamic, right? This yeah. is also something that is sometimes even out of your control, obviously. Yes. Right? And in the moment that you post something, for example, you never know what is happening with that. <laughs> is there, I guess um, also no possibility to say which kind of communities are using them in the end. <laughs> yes, yes uh, actually I haven't had uh, bad experiences since now with, with this work, but once I uh, discovered that a, um, a user, I didn't even know, was using one of my butterflies that I once had posted as his uh, uh, image mm -hmm. um, uh, on, on Facebook. Or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So that was also a moment. Oh, uh, that's that's my work. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that is, um, I I like it. Mm -hmm. I think um, I mean for um, this idea of authorship, for example, mm -hmm. or also. Um, having a particular control on your own work, which is mm -hmm. um, obviously always also a big discussion and also yeah. a challenge, I guess, for artists um, mm -hmm. um, in particular. But um, here we have the con uh, contrasting kind of situation, right? You are obviously... Yeah, it is actually... Uh, let it uh, yes, go, right? let it go. It, you know, that is uh, the people who use it are belong to the opposition. Mm -hmm. um, nobody who belongs to the other ideas would use one of these images because it is very obvious that it belongs to a certain narrative of uh, or certain identity. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe there would be a, a conflicting moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, but with this work, I haven't experienced it. There are a lot of um, conflicting moments uh, raising up when my work is shown uh, because of this kind of, exactly because of this ambiguity that mm. uh, can cause misunderstanding. But with this work, uh, I haven't experienced yeah. it yet. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> Just to mention it, there have been other examples, right? Which mm -hmm. have been also really legal consequences for you in Iran. Yes. When um, another work was uh, posted and um, mm -hmm. then obviously observed by the certain polizei, um, the, um, <clears throat> yeah. the um, sort of critical parts of the Iranian government who are really particularly interested in to see Mm -hmm. uh, what you are doing um, it is really something that um, we can mention. I think that mm -hmm. obviously your work is um, observed and under mm -hmm. surveillance. Um, at that time, it was um, it was a lady who was uh, posing on one of your. Um, yeah, I have done a, a series of uh, um, bean bags uh, uh, using uh, um, traditional religious banners. On, on them. And uh, this lady activist uh, uh, was sitting on one of them, posing with a glass of wine. 
which was some kind of very um, uh, uh, the, the, the government, the, the, the police didn't like that image. Mm -hmm. So they, not, they started not only attacking her, but also me as uh, um, the artist making these beanbags. Uh, and which was, which caused a very horrible situation for me and uh, they put me to court. Which is also yet not solved, no, completely? No, uh, no, mm. not yet. Mm. What I think is also, um, I would like to mention it because there is also a time situation mm. here. The work is from the 1990s, I think. Right. No, it was 2008. But it was not to, not a recent work, but the posting yes. happened much later. Yes, the posting happened, I think, 2016. Mm -hmm. And the whole problem came to 2016, mm -hmm. 17. So what um, is also, I mean, you have these um, sort of traces which your works are obviously yeah. producing which go in very different kinds of dimensions, also temporal, but also special, if you like, right? Mm -hmm. And that is something that is maybe also um, interesting to look at when we are talking about this work, mm -hmm. which um, is also the last example that, or mm -hmm. the last uh, work that mm -hmm. we have selected. But um, this is um, also an ongoing project. Yes, that, that is mean? written room. Here is written street, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because that is the uh, largest work I have done with it. That is my uh, the uh, uh, the script of Farsi, which is not uh, it's illegible. It is it, you cannot read it. It is just the rhythm of writing. So it is this kind of in between uh, memory of a language, memory of mother tongue being connected to it and disconnected at the same time. So as a, which the idea of this work is for me very much connected to uh, be an immigrant uh, living in another culture as uh, your mother tongue. So, uh, and that is a work that, as you said, I have been developing it through uh, many, many years. The first time I did it, it was, uh, uh, 95. So, and that is the last version of it that I have done uh, um, 2020. Uh, that is uh, uh, the Swiss city of Kuhn. And it's uh, in front of the um, uh, Melia. Yes, yes. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, center of the uh, Canton Graubünden, yeah, uh, and um, uh, it's asphalt, and I have used the uh, white paint that is normally used for the um, street lines and so mm -hmm. on. So um, that was uh, that. That is a that is the recent. Uh, work of this series and um, uh, the largest one and it's it is still there and will stay there until it vanishes. So uh, <laughs> um, that's also, um, that was a wonderful experience for me. And um, it was also the first time that I did this work directly on the public space. Normally I do it in in, in the so-called uh, white cube, mm -hmm. which is protected, which is in the museum, everybody knows it's about art, but doing it on, on the street, everybody's going there, uh, was, uh, was also uh, a challenge because some people came and asked, what is it? It is, it is a challenging work because the Iranians, the people who think that they can read it, they, try, they uh, start try to uh, read it, to have it, to have it back, and, uh, but they cannot read it. And the others who cannot read it, 
think what is she saying that I don't understand? What is going on? And this is uh, this ambiguity that um, I like about this work and it happens each time, but there is also another component in the work which makes it friendly and that is the rhythm of it. It has got some melody which is friendly. And uh, um, so this is, uh, uh, this is inviting also, um, which um, I like this, uh, uh, th this movement. Mm -hmm. To invite that you are to engage and to come closer and to try to engage with it and to um, mm -hmm. understand it. So this inviting the viewer is something that you also were already describing with this um, second view that yes. you ask the viewer to come closer to get a better understanding of what they see and um, to revise even them and their own kind of impressions um, yeah. that they have. There are these detours, right? These back yes. and forth that we have we have taken detours as a back and forth yes. to when we were talking about it and how does it uh, make sense maybe yeah. in this and these detours, um, they're, they're also, you were telling once that um, now this work even has, you, you think that it has even an official police file. No, I know oh. that it has. <laughs> because uh, uh, one uh, early morning I came to work and uh, there was a police officer there uh, with this kind of, what is it? Oh, no. oh, no. yes. There yeah, and um, they have uh, just uh, filmed the whole thing. Of course, I say that it hasn't got any meaning, but it is a public space. So the government has to uh, check it. And to check it, they had to uh, have an overview. So <laughs> they needed this kind of equipment. It must have been uh, recorded and then they uh, had definitely hired some uh, translator <laughs> trying to read <laughs> uh, to be sure that it hasn't got any meaning, but um, they cannot rely on that. Mm -hmm. I had once uh, did this work in uh, Berlin in Pariser Platz that there is a central uh, uh, building of a bank. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, they have a foundation and cultural foundation and there was an event there and I did this work and, uh, but the whole bank manager wanted to be sure that it hasn't got some kind of uh, um, terroristic uh, uh, <laughs> messages on it. So the curator has to sign a letter that it is illegible. Mm -hmm. So that is, if you, are, if you deal with the officials, you have to <laughs> go through this kind of absurdity. But uh, yes, they, uh, uh, this work has got a police uh, file. An actor. <laughs> there were other reactions as well, right? Um, I remember yeah. you were telling. <laughs> there were a lot of reactions. People were really stopping by trying to also mm. interact with the work. Yes, right? many young people who dressed up really uh, fancy and came and just made uh, photos and posted it on their Instagram. Or also, uh, that was also. <laughs> I, maybe I yeah, say one uh, uh, very nice story and we can stop it then. <laughs> um, once I was working in, in Swiss, there are a lot of security uh, agents on, on the way. So uh, one security man came and said, that was at the beginning of the work. And he asked, uh, what are you doing? And I said, that's an artwork. I'm, uh, I'm doing it and it is a commission of the, um, of the city. So uh, he said, ah, okay. And then he checked it and then he came back and said, 
yesterday I saw it and I thought, oh, these refugees have done some kind of capsule <laughs> 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 writing, <laughs> these refugees. And then uh, after a while, I said, okay, that's nice, but it is my work. <laughs> so, and then he started to, to um, uh, on, on uh, the knopf of open the, the open chest. And so suddenly he showed me, um, what do you call it? Um, Tattoo, tattooing, uh, tattoos on his boots in Arabic, and he said that he has uh, uh, his mother is Muslim, and his father uh, Christian, and he has got uh, and he started to ask me, do you know that God in Islam has hundred names and I have got five of it and and I asked him oh are you going to have all of hundred so <laughs> so suddenly you know you are confronted with really intimate but all the, so I, I was not expecting that this man would say something like that but he had it on his skin this uh, uh, this writing mm -hmm. and at the first uh, uh, the, the first question was um, the, or the first thing he said was oh I thought some refugees have written something mm -hmm. uh, so that is uh, this work is uh, some somehow uh, uh, going uh, have a sensitive uh, skin. Mm -hmm. So um, that was your story. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I think that is um, quite often also my, um, very, um, yeah, really shows also illustrates um, mm -hmm. why we thought that um, these um, three concepts here are really inspiring us now to yeah. also think about these stories and um, these kind of ways how. Um, you are producing the work, and just to say it, how long did it take to paint? Right, about uh, four weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks. So it was uh, <laughs> during the hot uh, Corona lockdown time, <laughs> yeah. and um, it was always like this. Um, so I just would like to also give you an understanding. I have never tried it out, but I just yeah, I cannot imagine how you were able to do it. But it is, <laughs> it is really hard work. It is no. a it is a wonderful work because you uh, I I love it I love doing it the doing of the doing of the artwork is actually the best part of it. <laughs> I know that you would say so, but still I would like to make also yeah. the question of embodiment. Yeah. Um, also make clear how what embodiment in that moment can mean. It can mean also really this. Um, joyful situation, it's meditation even sometimes for you, you were explaining mm -hmm. once. On the other side, it is really a work. Yes. Yeah, it is hard work, it is with uh, your hands and um, it's something that you do for hours. Mm -hmm. And you do it at different places and spaces. You have been mm -hmm. saying it already in the museum, Andrew and Torrance, for example, um, standing on the ladder the, um, and then painting uh, the, um, mm -hmm. The ceiling and all these kind of um, physical situations I wanted to also maybe emphasize, right? Yeah. Because um, we were also talking about how the script and the language is something where you feel belonging to. It is your mother tongue. On the other side, you are losing it somehow because it, it loses less um, meaning, right? It does not give sense any longer in this written mm. work. And um, so this embodiment and the endure loves is something that is so really um, also fascinating here. Mm -hmm. And also obviously other people also experience sometimes the same. Yes, yes. Uh, they do. Mm -hmm. they do. Um, again, um, we still have a bit time, I think, and we can also obviously um, talk a bit more. Um, shall we um, show one of the other works again, uh, maybe to... Um, to maybe I just can do so because <clears throat> I think this work is something where we have um, 
this ambivalent meanings, which means that different people are producing different meanings mm -hmm. into um, the representation of, for example, here now this, um, um, this work on the refugee crisis. Um, I just would like to maybe also may, uh, open this room for our own for our own imagination. How many media documentation and information we have been receiving since ever about refugees um, in the world and how they are drawing and how they are killed and um, how they are losing their lives, right? On the other hand, we have something which has also aesthetic sides. Yeah. Right, and um, where you as an artist also take liberty mm -hmm. to um, to use your own language in order to make a statement. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that um, I find um, also particular in this work um, here um, very um, yeah, important also to, to mention mm -hmm. again, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Um, have there been um, particular exhibitions where this work has been showing? Because what I think is also interesting is that depending on the places where it is shown, for example, mm -hmm. people and also the reception in general, but also the, um, the um, imaginations and interactions mm -hmm. are different. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I have uh, shown it um, in different exhibitions, you are right, uh, mostly in Europe, but also this uh, it's a edition, each edition, it's 15 editions, 15 mm -hmm. works. Their printing is always the same, but the water, the background, mm -hmm. because it is made uh, 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 individually, each paper I made it, uh, individually it is different so um, one edition of the work is in um, part of the collection of the Walker uh, mm -hmm. Center in USA so uh, and they have been showing it in uh, a, a presentation uh, focusing on uh, refugees mm -hmm. um, I have shown it in, uh, for example, Istanbul. That there was an exhibition uh, also focusing about global crisis. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of the uh, contexts. And um, but I also have shown it in my gallery here in München. So it is. Uh, it has been shown since then. Uh, in different, different contexts. Mm -hmm. And I think um, <clears throat> the same is also true for the butterflies, right? Um, mm -hmm. The butterflies, um, we were talking about the poetic sides um, also of the word butterfly in Persian. Yeah. Because it, it is um, called Agmakarani, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is, uh, there are a lot of uh, poems using this word and it is uh, the I, uh, you know it is the absolute moment of loving uh, uh, and self sacrifices which uh, is connected with the name of uh, butterfly <laughs> in Farsi. Uh, but um, um, yeah what I I have worked also with butterflies in different ways that there are big butterflies there are small butterflies i have done butterfly butterflies uh, as wallpaper huge walls uh, this work is they are in um, in boxes mm -hmm. and they are pinned uh, so that is uh, this kind of uh, actually um, collecting uh, the remembers the way that uh, the people used to collect butterflies. Mm -hmm. So that is this kind of, for me, is very much connected with the idea of archiving, mm -hmm. also uh, in, uh, in in museums or biological archives that, of uh, um, keeping them. Mm -hmm. 
maybe um, one last point. Um, <clears throat> When we are in these exhibition openings, um, the audience is, is very diverse, so they are also very um, often Iranians coming to these um, exhibitions, right? And um, here we have maybe also ambivalent sort of reactions to mm -hmm. not always they would agree with you, right? Is mm -hmm. that correct? Um, have um, I know that there are experiences and also mm -hmm. resonances where people are quite critical because mm -hmm. um, they say, well, this work, I mean, this is not not, not only Iran. Mm -hmm. Iran has also very beautiful, very traditional, important mm -hmm. sites, obviously. Mm -hmm. They even deny it. Mm -hmm. So how, when we are talking about how your work also then, um, seeing it later, um, floating into the social media or digital mm -hmm. media, uh, spheres, um, how they maybe become part of a community building situation. Mm -hmm. Here we obviously see also different sides, right? And of course, mm -hmm. yeah. So I belong to the to the people who criticize the mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So the community that uh, uh, I belong to, I think that my work goes also this way, and um, it's okay. Mm -hmm. These are part of, uh, um, as you said, uh, uh, some kind of narrative that um, um, that belong that, that I I belong to. Mm -hmm. That you are identifying with, but also yeah. having also this um, sort of producing for it. Mm -hmm. That is some kind of yes, I'm producing uh, work or um, some kind of language for uh, also, which is becomes a tool of identity making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. I um, would say maybe we are closing now our mm -hmm. conversation. Um, thank you for your attention and- Thank you very much.